When we work out, we're causing stress in our bodies. That's a given. Everyone has said that. But what we want to understand is how this stress can lead to overtraining and how this overtraining can lead to diminished hormone function. And we know how important hormones are. Okay, things like testosterone obviously play a critical factor in how much body fat we accumulate, how much body fat we burn, and overall how much muscle we build. So now there are some direct links with overtraining and testosterone decline. So let's dive into the science and let's understand if you're truly overtraining. Hey, if you haven't already, I want to make sure that you hit that subscribe button so you can learn all the ins and outs of nutrition, exercise, keto, fasting, and you name it. And if you're already a subscriber, hit that little bell so you can turn on notifications. All right, so first off, we have to understand what the symptoms of overtraining are. And the problem is they're a little bit vague because they hit everyone a little bit different. But in general, we're talking serious, serious fatigue. Then we're also talking sleeplessness. When you're overtraining, you are in a situation where your catecholamines like your adrenaline and your other fight or flight hormones are skyrocketing, meaning you don't sleep very well. But you're also gonna find yourself in a situation where you're getting sick a lot. Okay, you're not able to recover. And also when you don't recover, you have declines in performance. So if you're feeling like you're at a plateau, there's a very good chance you're overtraining. Well, let me rephrase that. No matter who you are, there's a good chance you're overtraining because it doesn't take much. But the big factor here is testosterone. Okay, what kind of effect does truly overtraining and does stress have on testosterone production in not only men, but women too? Of course, it's gonna have a bigger impact on men because we're driven a little bit more by testosterone, but it still applies to both genders. Now, when we look at the science, it's easy to think that it could be the cytokine hypothesis. Now, the cytokine hypothesis shows that whenever you train hard or whenever you work out or whenever you work out for a long period of time without adequate rest or recovery, you end up in a situation where you have vast amounts of interleukins that enter the body or are produced. So we're talking interleukin 1, interleukin 3, 5, 6, 10, 15, all these interleukins which trigger specific inflammatory responses within the body. We have to remember with training, we want inflammation. Inflammation is what heals us and recovers us. But if it happens too much, it takes energy away from the rest of the body. So the cytokine hypothesis says that testosterone is gonna decrease simply because our body is focused on healing specific things. And when you're under stress, it makes no sense for your body to focus energy on testosterone production for procreation. It just doesn't make sense. Why on earth would your body try to encourage you to produce more children when you're in a time of stress? But we also have to wonder which came first, the chicken or the egg? Is testosterone decreasing because we're overtraining? Or are we getting fatigued and stressed out and we're triggering ourselves to work out a little bit different and have different stress levels and that's causing testosterone to decrease? So what really came first? Did we already have the decrease in testosterone or whatever? Well, that's where we have to start looking at some of the science. So this first study that I wanna look at was published in the British Medical Journal, and it took a look at a large group of rugby players. And what they wanted to find out was the correlation between testosterone production, fitness level, and exhaustion. They wanted to find if rugby players were specifically more exhausted than other rugby players if they had differences in testosterone. So what they did is they factored in how their testosterone levels correlated specifically with their tiredness. So what they found with this study is that 25% of the rugby players that were super, super exhausted ended up having 30% lower levels of testosterone. But again, it brings us back to which came first, the chicken or the egg. Are they tired because they had low testosterone or do they have low testosterone because they're not really active the way that they should be? It's kind of tough. And the problem is that study is pretty subjective because we're not really looking at the facts. We're looking at tiredness. So we look at another study to take it one step further. This study was published in the Journal of Fertility and Sterility, and it took a look at test subjects that were endurance athletes. And what they did is they broke them into an overtraining group and a non-overtraining group. An overtraining group was simply classified as doing the same activity at the same intensity, but just double the amount. And what they did is they measured their testosterone levels, and also they tested their semen to see their actual sperm count. And they did this before they began exercise, immediately after exercise, and then three months after overtraining. And what they found was absolutely astonishing. The results were that the group that was overtrained ended up having a whopping decrease in testosterone by 39%. But not only that, they had a decrease in sperm count by 43%, all in conjunction with a 48% increase in cortisol. Now we get into the fun stuff. Why is this actually happening? Why is testosterone truly decreasing when we are overtrained? 
Well, one of the main things is something known as a corticotropin-releasing hormone. You see, when we have high amounts of corticotropin-releasing hormones, it triggers our body to produce more glucocorticoids and corticosteroids within the body. That simply means that our body is releasing more cortisol and other catecholamines that could be stress-inducing. So what's actually happening? Well, this corticotropin-releasing hormone stops the production of luteinizing hormone. Let me give you a quick breakdown of something known as the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis, or the HPTA. You see, we have the hypothalamus that sends a signal to the pituitary. Then the pituitary sends something known as luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone down to the testes to produce testosterone. So what we found is that this corticotropin-releasing hormone, when it shuts off the luteinizing hormone, it literally shuts off the signal from the brain to the testes to ever produce testosterone. So overtraining is directly telling the brain to no longer produce testosterone. It goes right in line with the theory of biology that we shouldn't be procreating when we're stressed out. But what about the cortisol theory as well? Well, since we have a related increase in cortisol, we can actually find that cortisol has a big effect on testosterone too. But what they found is that cortisol cuts off testosterone production directly at the testes. What that means is that cortisol, above all, just cuts off the supply like that. It just says, wait a minute, kill it. So whereas the corticotropin-releasing hormone goes sort of a wraparound way and goes to the brain, cortisol has a direct phone call to the testes and says, no more testosterone, kill it. So that is really interesting. But when we couple the two together, when we look at the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis and we connect the corticotropin cutting off the luteinizing hormone and the cortisol cutting off the testicular production, we have a double whammy of testosterone killing going on right there. So that means we're in a situation where testosterone levels are killed by two different pathways, making it that much harder to recover. And the only way to truly recover from that is to take some time off. So you have to sit back and you have to realize when you're truly overtraining. And it doesn't take much. And I've said this in other videos, but look at the big picture. We have different buckets, and they all tap into the same stress response and the same cortisol response. Whether you're working out in a controlled environment and controlled stress, or you have uncontrolled stress in your life coming from family or work, it's still dipping into that same reservoir of energy that you have. So you have to look at your life in a balance. Stop living your life in a box, stop thinking that if you miss the gym because you're super stressed out that you're a terrible person, and factor in overtraining and the cytokine hypothesis and of course the corticotropin hypothesis and the cortisol hypothesis. It's all relative. But of course, what trumps all is a good diet. Diet is gonna be what allows you to produce the right kind of corticosteroids, the right kind of glucocorticoids, and the right kind of hormones to live the best possible life. Now, if you want more videos on overtraining, I'm happy to dive into the science. But as I say in a lot of videos, we're just now scratching the surface. There's a lot to be learned and a lot of research to be done. So I'll see you in the next video.